I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 15th of June, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leo, Nicaragua. Today, being the Ides of June, it is a really busy day just because I have to run around dealing with a bunch of uh, banking and stuff like that that comes up on the 1st and the 15th. And it just happens to be that this morning, we have our air conditioning crew here installing two more air conditioners here at the house. And there's the Municipal Troop Festival is gonna be going on this afternoon. And we're hoping to run some errands and do normal work as well, today being a Thursday. And yesterday I was out of the office all day, so it's a really busy day. We're gonna get to that right after the bump. So I can't help but notice when I'm looking at myself on camera with this hat, which I like in real life, but on the camera, I tend to be really straight on. And when I'm looking straight onto the camera, I'm, I hesitate to say this because once you see it, you're not gonna be able to unsee it. But I kind of look like an old wizard who needs a quarter staff and I'm, I'm about to, to go out on an adventure. When I turn my head and you really see the hat and I get different angles, it's clear it's a cowboy hat in in the mexican style and then this is this is normal but when i'm looking straight onto myself i'm like huh yeah no i need a i need a staff and a robe and and i'm good to go with the between the gray beard and this this very yeah anyway uh so we're gonna start off grab some quick breakfast this morning having uh omelet and some gallo pinto we're gonna get to this really busy day of errands and things going on the air conditioning crew is already here our construction crew is already here we have so much going on it's just it's nuts Nuts. I was starting off the day with a veggie and cheese omelet and some gallo pinto and uh, and a dog. She's very excited. She loves that I'm outside filming. I mean, she's always pretty excitable, but this looks so delicious. We're going to start the day with this and then we're going to get to all the errands. Whew, busy day coming. It has been an absolutely crazy day of running errands. I feel overwhelmed because it's just every time I turn around, I have to go get more money for someone. And the issue isn't how much money it is, but it's the process of it. I swear, the thing that drives me crazy is no one wants to just tell me how much is needed or owed or whatever. It's at every step, it's a long discussion, and sorry, someone's working on a car back there. Uh, this long discussion of like why they need money, what it's for, kind of giving me under the hood lots of extra numbers that are smaller than the real number. And it's like, please tell me the total amount and no other details and allow me to go to the bank and get it. Make this a, sm a smooth process. And instead, I spend the majority of my time explaining to people that I need to know how much to give. I don't care about all these other details. I can't work with those other details and I can't function if I don't know how much is needed. And it's never a big amount, well, not very often. That's the thing is that everyone acts like it's this big thing that's being negotiated. It's just a bill. I just have to know how much it is. Oh, it's $30, not 25, but you didn't want to say 30. So you said 25 and then you started mentioning, but there were these extra parts. I don't care. That's, that's part of the bill. Don't give me the under the hood, like breakdown. If you want to put that on an invoice. Okay. But my gosh, I just want to be able to go get, so I've lost hours today as this process has continued. And Paul does this all the time. I'm doing this for him because he's not here. And it's just a never ending bit of, oh, there's this little extra thing that needs to be paid. There's this thing that needs to be paid. So that has been driving me crazy today. And I've ha I feel like I haven't been able to get to anything. Hopefully I'm gonna get to the video we wanna do today. That's something I've noticed. And I don't know if that's like us or if this is like a normal thing, but I, this feels like something that happens in Nicaragua. Partially there's this culture of not wanting to tell you the bad, the bad news of how much the bill is. And it's always so small that you're like, that's hardly bad news. And this culture of the, then it, it's like this habit of never wanting to divulge the final number. You have to like soften the blow by making it going on a long time. And they don't put together that the, the blow is the time that you're taking. The interruption to the things that I'm, I'm trying to get this work done and I can't because we're having this long discussion about something irrelevant. And please tell me the number. I'm, I'm really close to saying I'm not gonna pay you because because you won't tell me what's owed, right? Like I, I'm starting to be like, I'm going to institute a, anyone who doesn't give me a full detailed account the night before in writing with a final number is not paid until the following month. I don't care if it was a small thing, big thing, necessary, whatever, it's not happening unless it's submitted the day before and concisely. 
I'm actually in all seriousness planning on building a form that everyone has to fill out to tell me what to pay. And the only thing it will tell me is a number, right? <laughs> like it, it can record the rest if I need to look it up or something, that's fine. I don't need all these details. I get it. You needed an extra cable for something. You needed every, literally every time someone needs a cable, every time someone needs a, a piece of, like a piece, a bit of paint, right? Oh, can we, can we spend this? Can we, yes, just do it. Make it happen. The whole point of having managers is to not ask me, right? <laughs> just fix it. Uh, that, that has been my day and I'm, I'm at wit's end that I haven't been able to work all day. All I've done is run around and deal with the banking for that and deal with people for payments. Um, and then I did take the computer in. This is the gaming computer that we've uh, not had working for a year. And really I should have put more time into it. But I don't have a space to like hook up and work on computers. Like it's a big problem. I don't have desks. I don't have a workspace. I have just enough to do my daily work. And I know you're gonna say, but Scott, you work on computers. It's not the same, right? The work that I do during the day is IT, not fixing hardware. And I don't have a workbench. I don't have a monitor to hook up to work with things, I don't have space for it. So I did a whole bunch when the, th when the computer first died and it died over a period of time and uh, felt that we needed a replacement part. So uh, thinking it was the power supply because that's the error we were getting. Um, so we took it into to CompuMet and they did some diagnostics on it, which didn't take too long, but they have some space, they have a monitor, they hooked it up, uh, they, they moved some things and they had some cleaning supplies that I've been un unable to get not that I've really looked for, so I'm, I'm overblowing the case. I've been lazy about that, but I keep sending people out and they keep not coming back with it, right? Um, and they, they took the memory sticks out, cleaned them, put them back in, and after several tests, got the computer to start working. Uh, but they're not giving it back to us until next Tuesday, uh, but it is working. So that's a really big deal because we've been without that computer now for most of a year, and that's the kids' main video gaming machine. They do have a new video gaming machine that we use in uh, a different room, and that allows them to play things, and, and it lets us play multiple things at the same time. Gives us a lot more capability, and they needed it, but this is their big, expensive, like, main one that has most of the storage, and um, they've, they've not been able to use that for a long time, so getting that working again is really nice. It is really loud. They've been having this go on for about 30 minutes that they're working on a car across the street. They can't stop the alarm from going off. I don't know why they haven't just cut the wires and removed it. Like, I don't know the function of car alarms. It's a little bit of a rant. Literally, have you ever heard of someone having their car not stolen because of an alarm? No, but have you ever heard of someone taking a baseball bat to a car because its alarm wouldn't go off? Or getting fined for, for breaching noise ordinances? Or just making your neighbors really angry because you have a car alarm you can't shut off? That's a real thing. Car alarms aren't for security. They make people angry. Turn off your car alarm. Don't keep it in your car. All right, hopefully the car alarm has stopped. The car has moved. I had to, I had to just take a break because I couldn't even hear myself talking. That's how loud it was. That went on for about 40 minutes. All right, so our big thing today is that our two new air conditioning units have gone in. Now, I know a lot of you are going to be like, how much air conditioning do you really need, Scott? Like, come on, there's, you live down there all the time. You say it's not that bad. You don't really need air conditioning. Why do you need air conditioning now? What's what's different? And the, the answer is simple, is we have a couple of rooms of the house that don't have good airflow, and they get used as uh, types of rooms where you want them closed up. One gets used as a guest bedroom, or will be, once it's air conditioned. Uh, and it's an add-on to the house, so it has no design for airflow with the original house and the other uh, is similar but it, it's again it's a room that wouldn't have natural airflow uh, it was meant to be kind of a bodega we think and we're turning it into our media room our video gaming room and we're going to have that really soon prepped for the kids i mentioned that the computer is fixed or nearly and uh, that's going to be uh, coming back on tuesday and when that comes back that's going to be the device that goes in that room and there's a tv already in there that has not been used since we got it because the room is too warm and if you turn on a fan you have a fan right here you can't hear television you just can't do those things with a fan. This is part of the, the, the thing that not growing up Nicaraguan, they're used to this massive amount of background noise and then doing their activities over it. Um, so that's part of the reason why when you go to a, a bar or whatever, they're used to this loud music and talking over it. Whereas in North America, we're used to keeping the background noise really low and talking over it in a very different way. Um, and so they're used to watching TV with a fan right next to your head and people do it. As someone who grew up not doing it, we can't handle it at all. We're just like, we, I can't even tell that the TV's on. Like I'm so, I just zone out. And when you look away, you don't hear it at all because you don't have the prompts to, to listen for something. 
it's like it's not even there. So it doesn't work. And for video games, which tend to have a lot of subtle sounds, you need those sounds to know someone's creeping up behind you, to immerse yourself in the experience or whatever, um, having, having to have a fan and being really warm anyway, and trying to keep multiple people warm. Like, where are you gonna sit? Like, so part of our goal of having a media room, because this is me and my kids, right? My, my daughters and my dogs, and what we want to do is have a couch, a lot of soft pillows, an ottoman, get in there, grab some popcorn, pile on the couch, get the dogs in there, get all snuggly, and, and play a video game together, do some video game adventuring together. That's our thing that we really like to do, uh, and we can't do that because it's so warm that and if you have a fan, only one or two people gets cool, not everyone. You certainly don't want to be crowded together on a couch. It'll be loud. You won't be able to hear things. It's just not the same. So this is a thing that most Nicaraguans don't do, first of all. Um, but this is an important thing for us and having the ability to have a media room that we can keep cold, make comfortable, sit in there and, and like really watch things is a really big deal because even now like we've been watching Doctor Who and and the girls and I often have shows that we watch together and, and things in video games we like to play we're always doing something like well we're going to sit on a bed well what happens well two people lean up against the wall I'll lay across the the foot of the bed or I'll sit on the floor because it's so uncomfortable and we'll kind of make do and it just makes you not want to do that right it makes us do it far less often it makes it uncomfortable um the dogs don't know where to go uh it, it's just everything is tough i want to have a couch i want to have a nice comfy place to sit i want to be able to put my feet up i want to be actually comfortable like I, I like i designed it um and that's something we've just been without so that's where we're getting we're getting much closer to that and hopefully in a few days um that's going to be really set up we have to buy a couch yet for that we have to get curtains for the windows um we gotta get the computer back there's a few things that need to be done but overall it's coming along quickly now getting air conditioning in there was a really major step so that's why we have it in those rooms most of the rooms in the house that are bedrooms we do have air conditioning we are from the north there are times that we get warm um, I try quite a bit not to use air conditioning uh, when I can help it. My office has not been air conditioned for weeks now, um, and I'm doing fine, right? I forget that it's even a thing to turn on, and I often don't even run the fan. I don't need it, but um, there are warm days. A lot of bugs I'm standing. You can see, I'm going to show this. So we've had the rainy season start, right? And you've seen this during the dry season. Look how much grass and whatever there is growth back here. There's whole new trees that have come up. Um, not that one, but there are. there's so much. So it's like a jungle all of a sudden, I mean, that's why they call it like a jungle because we're actually, you know, in the jungle. And uh, it's it's crazy how much uh, grows back here. And I'm gonna show, I think these are baby cashews just getting started. I might be wrong as what kind of tree this is. I think this is another crop of cashews getting started. Uh, so that was our big thing for the beginning of the day. And then uh, we're hoping in just a little while, we're gonna go out and do some more filming. Um, I've been prepping for that all day. So that's that's what we're doing today. I'm actually recording the 15th in real time. Um, I've been so far behind on videos. I'm working really hard to catch back up. I actually managed to get like a whole week caught back up and then lost it all because things got so busy again. So trying very hard not to fall behind. So we were getting ready to go out and record the first of a number of events that are going on for the anniversary of the liberation of Leon this week. And it started to poor, absolutely poor. So I quickly threw the GoPro out in the yard and recorded a little bit so you could see the rain coming down. If you watch my shorts, you've seen some of this, but it was pretty intense. And we were just, I mean, we were seriously just about to go out through the door uh, and we discovered this. So we gave it a little bit of time. We didn't race out and it got a little bit lighter. It didn't ever stop. It remained pretty solid all evening and I was sure they were going to cancel this event and we weren't sure exactly where to find it, but we decided to venture out anyway. You can see how much water's coming off the roof. Marcel is like, no, cannot make it through. We had to go another way. This is so ridiculous. There was so much water. We were absolutely soaked trying to get to this event and uh, we didn't know where to go because the city uh, listed it as uh, the Plaza San Sebastian which is not listed on any map and no one we asked knew exactly where it was. A few people were like, yeah, it's a real thing. Some, a bunch of people were like, no, never heard of it, not a real thing. Some people told us it was Central Park, which we know it's not. And so we ended up wandering around, but when we were in Central Park, we could hear distant drums, which turned out to be a high school, not the plaza, but it got us closer to the plaza and then we were able to figure out where it was. So this is us heading south 
from the park and we came upon this giant thing and I went on Google Maps and created the Plaza San Sebastian. So you are now able to find it on Google Maps. Thank you, you're welcome. Uh, and we stumbled on this though and in the pouring rain, keep in mind this is pouring rain. This is the people behind the grandstand or behind the, the stage, the, the judging area, whatever it is. And uh, so we came up from behind and found this really large uh, color guard competition going on uh, and it was, it was just amazing. So I wanted to show this partially because this is a, just an interesting event going on at night and it's part of the Leon anniversary uh, activities for the week. So this is fun and interesting and something different, but it's also, uh, so this is what we in the United States would refer to as a color guard competition. This is essentially the color guard. Uh, for those who are not familiar, this is the group of dancers. So it's a little bit like cheerleaders, I suppose, uh, who march in front of a marching band. And I come from a marching band background, right? So this, I'm used to this, but I've never had to really describe color guard before. So it's a group of dancers who normally moves in front of a marching band uh, and is kind of filling the same role as cheerleaders with a sports team, sort of and they, they do dance routines and provide some amount of, of motion and color, whatever, for a marching band to play along to, so that they complement each other. And uh, so this particular competition here in Nicaragua, they're known as municipal troops. So color guards are known as troops, but they do have a marching band component. And you can't really see them in these videos, but they're back behind where they are is a stationary marching band. So this competition is only for the dancers only for the troop, only for the color guard, uh, but their band plays with them and they just uh, do their, their dances in front of uh, the, the, the judging stand, which is this big thing on the right. Um, and so this is, uh, it's an interesting thing and these are called municipal troops because each one is representing a different city or municipality around Nicaragua. So this is a big uh, nationwide event where these groups are coming from all over the country to compete uh, and, and you can see the size of the crowds here in the heavy rain. It had slowed down a little bit, but it was still quite, if you watch the videos and pay attention, sometimes you can see the rain driving through the sky. Like it's, it's seriously wet uh, the whole time we were out there. It wasn't too cold. This is Nicaragua, so it tends to, to remain warm. Um, you can definitely see the rain at times. And uh, so these different groups came up and we had a lot of fun standing. And, and I'm really beginning to learn that some people recognize me and we're just a lot more confident walking up with the cameras and everything. And so if you're confident enough and a few people recognize you and you have decent equipment, pretty much no one asks any questions and we're able to just hop right in to wherever it, it makes sense to film from and are able to get in and, and get this stuff for you guys. So we're right in front of the judging station pretty much. We're, we're super close. I actually had to move out of the way at a few, a few points uh, for the groups but it was really interesting and it was fun. I'm glad that we went out. We caught probably about 45 minutes of it. I think overall it was like a three hour competition, uh, but it's really neat for me to see how many people in Leon come out for this kind of thing on a weekday night uh, for a color guard competition in very windy, very rainy conditions. Uh, just that, that's very cool. In the United States, you'd have a really hard time getting large crowds like this to come out uh, for something of this nature. So it was fun and interesting. And people ask, you know, what do you do uh, around Nicaragua? And of course, it's all, like I say every time, it's a, what would you do in America? It's all the same thing. What would you do in Canada? Same things, but of course, different ratios and different whatever and, and something like this is uh, a very uh, kind of unique, important, um, interesting uh, at cultural activity that of course is not unique to Nicaragua. Lots and lots of places have color guards and, and troops of this nature, but this particular uh, style and everything is, is very much a Nicaraguan thing. And so I think this makes for an interesting, fun experience that uh, you know, free to go out to uh, and very um, culturally significant, important to the country uh, and something that you're not going to be used to. And over time, uh, it's funny when we first came to Nicaragua, of course, these things were like, what are they doing? I can't believe this is going on. Is this normal? And now it's like, yeah, of course this is normal. This is totally Nicaragua. Everything here that's so 
unexpected, uh, most likely for my viewers, uh, the, this very kind of American style marching band with the Higantonas, the, the giant, uh, the giant Tesses in the, the big costumes going around and the type of music and the dancing. And it feels so normal, so, so common, um, because every time we have a parade, every, every event, there is color guards like this out marching with the marching bands, uh, and doing these shows. It's, it's very much a part of everyday life. This is not a special thing. This is just a competition versus a normal parade. Uh, but the, but it was really a lot of fun. We had a good time. We were, we were laughing. We hung out with some of the, some of the troops, uh, and talked to them. And, uh, yeah, I recommend, uh, getting out and exploring your options of things to do. Uh, get involved with the community this whole week. I'm going to do my best uh, to get out and film a number of interesting things uh, that are going on in Leon this week of the year. If you're if you're in Leon uh, for kind of the week leading up to the 20th, so somewhere around the 14th to the 20th, most years uh, there's always a lot of activities that go on in the city. They're always free. Um, when it's when it's this week, it's it's all the city uh, activities. So. so Plan for it. If you're going to be in the city, come out, and there's, there's always something to do. With my little dog running around. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, I'm going to put the link on the screen. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller. That helps to support us going out and, and capturing all these activities for, you, for all of you. And uh, if you are interested in potentially moving uh, to Nicaragua or, or coming to visit, need custom tours, anything of that nature, uh, please email us. Reach out info at relocatenicaragua.com. We'd love to have a conversation about what we can, we can offer uh, right now if you're watching these videos when they are new. Uh, we are doing one hour uh, consultations like on WhatsApp or Zoom or something of that nature, like, like getting on the phone basically, and phone is an option. Uh, it's just $50 uh, for an hour. Ask your questions, uh, get things answered, find out what you need to know uh, to consider for moving. So we'd love to have that conversation. As always, please like and subscribe if you haven't already and uh, share on social media. Tell your friends, tell your family about the show and uh, we will see all of you tomorrow.